Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about beginning PHP. I'm going to break these into individual videos so that um, so it's not one two one long two hour video about how to use PHP and the different functions and variables and arrays and stuff like that. I want to break it into individual videos so that if you know variables, you can jump to arrays or you can jump to functions or you can jump to objects or you can jump to whatever. I'm just mumbling now. Roll the intro. This first video is going to be um, the basics of PHP and getting started with PHP. Um, the next video, I let me look at. Um, so this video, we're going to talk about what is PHP and why you use it and get into kind of a basic knowledge of PHP or a, a starting basic knowledge. Um, and then we will start writing our first little bit of PHP code. I'll do that in this video. But really getting into writing PHP, we're going to do that in the second video. And then the third video will be variables and the different types of variables and stuff like that. Fourth is error reporting, and then we're going to get into functions, and then we're going to get into arrays and, and all this other stuff. So I have my little list here of what, um, what we're going to talk about and what we're going to do. Okay, so what is PHP and why and when do you use it? Well, PHP is a server-side scripting language that was created in the late 90s. And before really the server-side language, you basically had HTML and CSS. HTML, let's talk about just HTML because CSS has evolved over the years and has become very, very powerful in what it can do. If you don't know HTML and CSS, you should go learn HTML and CSS because a lot of the stuff that you do with PHP is going to require HTML. Now, HTML is what the browser reads and displays pages by. The CSS tells each element, each HTML element, how to look, whether it's the colors, the shape, um, the orientation on the page, you know, the, the location on the page. CSS makes the site, makes the HTML code look good. All right, so go learn HTML and CSS because it's really, really important before you even learn PHP. Now, WordPress by default will give you themes that are already built with HTML, CSS, and that's the reason why a lot of people use WordPress is because it's a core platform built in PHP to kind of do a lot of that stuff for you. And then you can install plugins and themes and stuff. And it makes it where you don't have to know HTML, CSS, and PHP, but you're limited to what the theme developers and the plugin developers have built for you. So expanding on, on PHP lets you build your own functions, your own plugins, and your own themes to do everything else that you want to do. Now, WordPress is not the go-to for everyone. You don't have to have WordPress as the core to build your website. You can build it just in HTML and CSS, or you can build it with HTML, CSS, and PHP, or HTML, CSS, and ASP, or HTML, CSS, PHP, and JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is the scripting language that is client-side. And what that means is you have the nice looking website, and you have a button on there, and when you click that button, not always, but sometimes that button is controlled by JavaScript. And if something loads on the page without having to refresh the page or take you to another page, typically that is JavaScript. So I call that the action, right? So you've got HTML and CSS, which is the structure. Then you've got PHP, which is the server-side language that I'll explain here in just a second why it's called server-side. And then JavaScript, which is client-side, which is everything that the action of the website. Now, some links and stuff like that can be um, just HTML, like an, uh, a link can be just HTML, and it'll take you to another page. But if it changes the look or the style or the content of that current page, most of the time that's done with JavaScript, 
right? So when we're talking about PHP and we're talking about server side scripting language, when you go to a website, if that website is built with PHP, any of the code in your website that's written in PHP is done on the server before the site is ever delivered to you. And some people run into a problem with that because they want to do the PHP code after the site's loaded, but you can't do that because PHP is done before the site is delivered to you. And that's a way we're able to create dynamic websites in WordPress and in other ways that the pages don't really exist until you go to them. Now, what I say with that is I had recently had a client that asked me to download all of her pages, her WordPress website pages to a thumb drive so she could look at each one and, and go through them. The problem with that is, is those pages don't really exist except for in the database. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to save every one of these pages to a thumb drive so that you can go through them. If you did that, you would have to go to each page of the website, save it as a PDF or something like that, and then put those onto a thumb drive and save it as the name of the page. And it's dynamic websites are powerful because you don't have to use so much of a hard drive for every individual page. What that also helps do is you can build included files, which are like the header and the footer. And that way you only have to change one header file. You only have to change one footer file or any includes like a menu. You could do a menu with an include and only have to change one menu file and it changes across the entire website. That makes it very, very powerful. And that's what WordPress allows you to do and other content management systems do that as well. So typically in the past, you had a, a LAMP stack for building PHP websites. And a LAMP stack is a Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Now, Linux is the operating system of the computer or server. Apache is the server software that runs. MySQL is a database software or database server. And then PHP, of course, is the scripting language. Nowadays, there's other alternatives to Apache. So you can have Linux and, I mean, um, Nginx and other, there's other alternatives that are actually probably a little bit better than Apache. We use Nginx on a lot of our servers now. So, and you don't have to run PHP on a Linux machine. You can run it on a Windows machine. I don't advise it, but you can do it. So typically you had a, a, a LAMP stack and you don't necessarily even have to use MySQL, but it is the most widely used. All right. So I hope that it kind of explains the server side scripting language where everything is done on the server before the site is delivered to you. Um, and if you have any questions, just put them in the, in the comments below. P PHP was created to build these dynamic websites and it's evolved over the years and there's other scripting languages and stuff that are built off of PHP or, you know, standalone, but PHP is still the most widely used in my opinion. Um, and WordPress is, you know, built on PHP and WordPress serves millions of websites and it's still probably the widest, widely, widest most used platform out there. So, all right. So it's a server-side scripting language. We talked about that, um, CH, uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Use a PHP hosting company. All right, so you can install your a local server on your computer. There's um, XAMP, which is a, a software that's built to create even on a windows machine or a mac to create a lamp stack basically it installs php and mysql and you can run websites locally if you want to do your building and testing and stuff like that um there's xm xamp which is basically or did i say i already say that one xamp there's mamp which was i think designed specifically for mac originally and there's, there's, there's a few others and those will allow you to install 
uh, Apache, MySQL, PHP on your local machine. Um, one of the ones I just did the other day for someone was MAMP, M-A-M-P, and it actually had an alternative for Nginx. So we installed the Nginx, MySQL, and PHP on their computer so they could do some, some testing. All right, so, but the easiest thing to do is to go to GoDaddy or Bluehost or HostGator or something like that, get hosting that is um, a LAMP stack or MySQL, PHP, and Nginx, and you can do those for really, really cheap, eight bucks a month or some $4 a month, or there's all kinds of options. Um, so I would suggest using a hosting company like that or doing it local and not spending a lot of money if you're just now learning on, on what to do. So now we're gonna jump into actually looking at PHP on a page and seeing how it reacts, all right? So let's get started. So here on our ideapro.io site, and we'll go to the actual page here. So here on ideapro.io, I've created a page that's just example.php. Now, when you're creating a PHP page, it needs to have the extension of .php. There are alternatives where you can do, you know, like this, where it's example, dot, and then you can do PHTML. Um, you can actually even set up your server to read HTML files as a PHP file. So you could do example.html, and when you rendered that page, it would read any PHP and execute that PHP. I don't recommend that, but if your server's not set up correctly and you do example.html and you have PHP code in there, it won't render that PHP because it doesn't understand that it's a PHP file. So it's important to make sure that you use .php in the, in the saving of the page so that your server knows that that is a PHP file and it will execute it as PHP, all right? So let's go back to our page here. So here, what we're gonna do is if we just typed in something like hello and saved it and went back to our page and did refresh, it's going to give us the hello because it looks at that as HTML because we haven't opened a PHP tag to tell it to execute any PHP. So let's go back here. So the PHP tag looks like this. It's a open caret question mark PHP and then good a good code is to close the PHP. A lot of new stuff will allow you to not close the PHP and you can just execute it like this. The browser knows or the server knows that this code is no longer you know, executing PHP, so it will close it for you. I don't recommend that. I always recommend to close that PHP. And people are like, oh, well, you should save, you know, save some space and, and not include that. It's two characters. It's a question mark and a, and a close caret. So I always include that. Um, and some sites, some plugins uh, will actually give you an error if you don't close those PHP tags. So I always recommend to open the PHP tag and close it. Now here we can start writing some PHP code. So there's two ways to print information to the browser. There's two commands. One is called print, which is very simple. It's print. And that doesn't mean to your printer, that means to the browser. So print, and then we're gonna use some single quotes and we're gonna say, hello, my name is Josh. We're gonna save that and we're gonna come back here. We're gonna refresh and it's gonna say, hello, my name is Josh, all right? So the other thing that we can do is called echo. And echo will do the exact same thing it'll say, hello, my name is Josh. So the difference between print and echo is, is with echo, you can do a little bit more. You can print out variables. And we're gonna talk about variables in um, the next video, but here I wanna show you just quickly what a variable is and, the different, and what you can do. So we can do a variable called name and we can say Josh. 
So then we can do echo name. And we can refresh and there's Josh. Now we can also print name. And it says, Josh, we did refresh this page. So the difference is, is if we said dollar sign name two, for example, and we said Michael, oh, come on, name two, we're gonna get a page isn't working. The problem is, is print doesn't allow you to print out multiple variables, all right? So echo, it's going to say Josh and Michael. So that's kind of the difference in echo and print. There's some more, but um, I don't wanna get into those right now. Um, the, we'll talk about print and echo more later on and the different types of variables and stuff like that, all right? So those are, that's an easy way to start writing. So we'll just say name, and that works. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about on this video before we go into the next step and go to the next video is mixing PHP with HTML. So by default, if you came up here and you said, here's an H1 that says, um, welcome to my site. So now we have welcome to my site and then we still have our PHP variable here. And then if you come down here and then you did an H2 and you said first article, right? So now we have the H1, our PHP information, and then first article here. So you can put HTML, uh, PHP tags inside of HTML. You can also say, my name, whoops, my name is, and then open a PHP and close a PHP bracket and say print name and we can get rid of this echo here. We'll clean up the code just a little bit here. So now we have my name is, and we open the PHP and we close the PHP and it says name. So if we go back and refresh this, my name is Josh. So we can include PHP inside of HTML elements. And by doing that, again, before this page is loaded, the server takes this variable and puts it right here before the page is actually loaded, not afterwards. So with JavaScript, we could leave an area here that said, uh, we could open a span and do an ID and call it name. And then inside of this, we could do you know, we could add a JavaScript tag that would update that ID name and put in Josh there, but it's going to do it after the page loads. And the problem with that is, is some people are gonna see, my name is, and then it might take a second before the name actually pops in there if you're using JavaScript. So that's what makes server-side scripting languages so powerful, is everything's done on the server before it's delivered to the browser and uh, relying on the the user's page to create the con to manipulate the content um, to me is kind of risky if someone's got a three-year-old computer and a, a bunch of malware and a bunch of um, plugins on their browser and stuff like that your page may load really slow and it may take 10 seconds before that JavaScript loads. So people might see a very different looking site for a while, or it could be even they have JavaScript turned off or a plugin on their browser is causing JavaScript not to load and they see just a bunch of text. So 
there's a lot of push for people to build JavaScript-based websites that does everything on the user side. I like the server side. I can control the server. I can control how powerful the server is and how fast the server runs. So everything that's delivered to the end user is basically HTML and CSS. There's a, gonna be some JavaScript in every site that we build because JavaScript is, is a powerful language for the end user, but there always needs to be a fallback to non-JavaScript stuff. So if a link is built with JavaScript and JavaScript doesn't load, there needs to be a fallback for that link. So a lot of times I'll create a link in standard format. And then if I'm using JavaScript, I'll change that link on, with JavaScript to be a JavaScript link. And I can explain that in a future video about, about JavaScript. Today we're talking about PHP and how powerful the scripting language is on the server side. All right. So that's the introduction to PHP and kind of what it does. And in the next video, we're going to talk more about the different types of variables and how you use them and stuff like that. So remember to subscribe. I'm going to make these videos into a, um, can't think of what I'm talking about. Um, playlist. There we go. Look at that. I found it. Playlist. We're going to make these videos into a playlist so you can follow along with each video. And if you're watching this right away, this may be the first video that I've put up and the second video will come, you know, pretty soon, hopefully right away. So remember to subscribe, like this video and any questions you have, please leave those in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.